Hi, so it is about 4.02 on Wednesday. Um, it's May 23rd, so I'm really winding down in the school year. And the last couple of videos, I talked about something called a unit menu. And some, some of my viewers had questions about what a unit menu is and basically how I construct one, um, how to use it in the classroom. So I thought that since one of the last topics that I am discussing with my honor students is equilibrium. I thought that um, talking about this in the video would really help kind of put in perspective as far as what a unit menu is. So a unit menu really is exactly what it sounds like in that it is a menu. It is a menu of options that the students can use to understand content. So really, um, I take the point of view where if students are given choices, they're more likely to be successful in the learning because they're taking kind of more ownership over their own learning. So um, the differentiation piece is a really big part of what's going on in my district right now. And so um, I typically use unit menus to differentiate for process, but you could also um, differentiate for product. So, for example, the process would be how they learn the content, and the product would be how do they demonstrate their learning. So, um, I've actually gotten pretty good at you know doing both, but it just depends on really what um, resources are out there. Um, so, typically, there are some staples that I use in my unit menus when I differentiate for process and when I differentiate for product. So, what I thought I would do is I would show you kind of the um, starting place that I'm at with um, developing this unit menu just to kind of give you some idea. And then next week, um, well actually I started on Friday, but I was thinking that on Friday I would kind of take some video just to kind of show you the options in action. One word of caution though, whenever you are, um, especially teaching something for the first time, it's really important that you have a some sort of professional learning community or a PLC that can help you um, develop these resources because it is incredibly overwhelming if you're trying to find all these different resources on your own. So um, being able to kind of rely on my colleagues to say like, hey, I've got this lab on Le Chatelier's principle, or hey, there's this really great simulation on Le Chatelier's principle. You know, like to be able to kind of compile those resources makes a really big difference in um, how you're able to kind of construct your unit menu. So the other thing that can be um, at least difficult for students is time management. So as I show you my unit menu, um, and again, this is a really a rough draft. I haven't decided and kind of worked everything out just yet, but um, you really should think about possibly posting certain timelines as far as when things are due. And so that was one of the things that I had a hard time with when I first started doing unit menus is like the students were kind of all over the place. And um, you know, the students were supposed to take formative assessments, but because they weren't budgeting their time, they weren't able to do that. And so I was kind of rushing around trying to make sure that they had some sort of low stakes assessment to make sure that they understood the content. So, um, so really, I guess the purpose of this video is to expose you to what a unit menu is and then also allow you to kind of just take some helpful tips and tricks um, as you construct your own. So this is the beginning of a unit menu that, um, I, again, I'm designing for my equilibrium unit. Um, this is kind of just a rough draft, but every unit menu includes the same things. So for example, um, I have my students always have binders in my class, so I always ask the students to have a classwork section and I put the um, little star here to tell the students that it should go in the classwork section. I do um, print this out for the students, but you could absolutely, um, I guess, send it to the students via Google Drive um, if you have that option. Um, every unit menu includes the title. It includes the objectives for the unit. So this is what the students should be able to do by the end of the unit menu. Um, down here I have um, the titles of all the different, um, I guess, sections. So this is going to be a, a long unit menu. And um, 
I am only on part two, but I really need to um, talk about, you know, Q versus K, and I need the students to um, be competent in using ice tables to calculate equilibrium concentrations, and then I also need to take a look at um, KSP. But I still thought this would be good for you guys to kind of see, because if you notice, my introduction to equilibrium starts with either a lab or a FET simulation. Um, the lab is something that um, is in the book. It's actually called a launch lab, and it's where you have the um, you have a, a volume of a liquid um, in a graduated cylinder, and you transfer that volume using straws to a beaker, and you continue to transfer until you reach equilibrium. And then the students analyze the data, and based on their graph, they see that hey, when we talk about equilibrium, it doesn't actually mean that the amounts of substances are equal. So um, that activity is really great because so many students have that misconception. The FET simulation is very, very similar. And like I said, because I'm in a one-to-one -one district, um, the students um, can use their Chromebooks in order to do this. But the FET sim, um, these are great because it has those teacher resources. So I really didn't have to create too much with this. I'm gonna be changing the questions a little bit, but this is um, a FET that the students also have a choice to do. I do indicate, you know, for example, select one. They have to choose one of these, all right? And then when I come down here, when we're getting into Le Chatelier's principle, um, you'll notice that this is a little bit of a longer section because I have them um, working on this for about two class periods, so 528 and then 529. So they have an option for um, watching the video on Le Chatelier's principle, r um, reading the textbook and taking notes, there is a lab that they can do, which is called stressing in equilibrium. So it looks at um, bromothymol blue, for example, and stressing the equilibrium in there so that they see the color change using acid or base. And there's a bunch of other different tests. Um, and then uh, finally, they have the option of looking at an infographic. The infographic is actually made by compound interest. It's actually the background of my computer, so I'll show you. So that's the, that's the infographic that I'm sharing with the students. You may say, well, you know, aren't these taking, you know, different times? And yes, it, it, all of these options take a different amount of time. But that's why it's key that you have the time constraint written up at the top. So that's why um, I always tend to do that. So I always tell them, like, if you're not done with this by then, then you have to go home and you have to finish this stuff. Then as I come down here, um, every um, activity... Um, usually incorporate some sort of formative assessment. So my typical go-tos um, for the assessment piece would either be a worksheet, um, some sort of puzzle, or a quiz. The Science Geek quiz I did not make. It actually is a website called Science Geek, um, and it basically asks them to um, take a look at a bunch of different reactions and predict the direction of shift. Um, the jigsaw puzzle is actually a Tarsia puzzle. It's um, a really easy puzzle, and I think what I like the most about the puzzle is it has the students working together to kind of rationalize what matches with what. And then for them to check their answers, they can ask me for a QR code, and I will assist them to make sure that the answers are right. The worksheet, so like all of these, you can see like all of these, the answer keys are available to the students, and I think that's really important with the unit menus. You want to make sure that the answer keys are available so that they're making sure that they're getting things right. Um, in the past, I have done Google formative assessments, and so the way I do that, and this is an old one from my solutions unit, but basically um, what I would do in the past when I was ever, I was giving a Google form assessment, I would provide a QR code, um, and then the students can access it using their QR code reader on their Chromebooks and then they use this paper as scrap and they give this to me when they're done with it. They can see the results immediately so it makes it really really easy um, both for me and for them so they can kind of see where they went wrong. So that's kind of where I'm at um, in terms of my unit menu. I still have like I said a few more sections to add but um, that's for the most part what it looks like but you can see there's lots of choices as far as how the students can choose to learn the content. Um, these four things are very effective and um, basically the way that the students can know if they understand the material is by completing these assessments. So it's not like these assessments are going to necessarily tell them, you know, different 
information, they all kind of hit on the same thing. And so I would say at the end of the day, the most important thing is that you make sure that your assessment choices are reflecting what they're going to see on their summative assessment. So it's Friday, so I'm a little dressed down because I have my t-shirt on, but uh, it's a science t-shirt. So, But um, I wanted to quickly show you that I did finish the unit menu that I was talking about in the last video clip. Um, so let me show you what the students are doing today. So right now, we're kind of at the part where um, we're looking at an introduction to equilibrium. So the students have um, two choices. They could either do the lab or they can do a um, simulation. So what I do whenever I set up my stuff for a unit menu is I have these baskets. So these baskets have all of the stuff that I need in order to um, provide for the students. And so each handout is one particular activity that the students may choose. And then, be, like I said, because I'm on a cart, I also have the equipment set up. So depending on what they choose, they come over here, they'll grab one. If they are doing the lab, they'll actually grab um, the equipment for the lab and then they'll go to a lab station. Um, one thing that I really like about the unit menus is I've been able to incorporate a lot more li like literacy in the classroom. So this is a, a science um, article. This actually is a Chem Matters article. Uh, I'm pretty sure this might be a freebie on the um, ACS site. Um, but I've been able to um, incorporate more literacy um, in the class by having the students read the article and annotate the article. Um, and they've actually found it kind of interesting, and that's been really good for usage of phenomena and whatnot. So my day is just getting started. Homeroom's about to get, get going, so I, I gotta go. But, um, but that's pretty much it, and that's what they're gonna be working on today. The amount of water that's in this jar is really bothering me. I know, there's like a, not even a droplet. <laughs> I'm trying to elevate the meme. Oh, we're done. Oh, my God. Wait, we're not done yet. We gotta have to go over the 40s. So it's about four o'clock on Tuesday. My day is all done. I will say that the um, STEM presentation was great for my students to hear. Some of the things that they emphasized, which I always emphasize with my students, but I guess it means a lot more coming from somebody that's actually in the industry and in the business, um, was they were talking about you know the value of perseverance and how um, when you're in your job, and, or even trying to get a job, people are going to say things to you like, no, you won't be able to do it, or you can't do it. And to persevere past that makes a big difference in how we are perceived and makes a big difference in what we can accomplish. And the other thing that they emphasized was that um, mistakes are necessary. So you may spend, for example, five hours doing a problem set. This one young lady was talking about how it took her five hours to do this one problem set for her class. And um, she persisted through it and you know did the problem set, but then eventually you know she got you know quicker at doing it she found kind of easier ways to do it and so she was trying to send the message to the students that you know you definitely have to put the time in you definitely have to put the effort in but if you do you're going to see success and so that again was one thing that I would always try to instill in my students is that at the end of the day you may never study chemistry again um, but the skills that you're learning in my class now will ultimately help you be a better learner in the long run, a more independent learner, um, a, a, somebody that demonstrates grit and perseverance. And so I really think that it was a valuable um, assembly for the students to go to. My CP students were finishing up um, looking at Le Chatelier. We did a do now today and then I gave them some extra practice and then tomorrow we'll go over it and I do have a Tarsia puzzle for that they're going to do. Um, I'll show you what that looks like tomorrow as I, but I, I really have to get going because I actually have a technology committee meeting um, but I will be sure to check in with you tomorrow. It's Wednesday already so I'm here this morning um, getting ready to kind of finish this last part of the unit menu with the honor students. So one of the, I guess, drawbacks about the unit menu is that there's a lot of prep up front. And so I was only able to get like the first half of the unit menu done. So the first half focuses on um, 
basically like an introduction to equilibrium, so like what equilibrium is, and then it looks at um, Le Chatelier's principle, so kind of the more, I guess, qualitative aspect of equilibrium. And then in the second half of the unit menu, which I'm working on right now, the students are going to be focusing on um, Q versus K, so like the reaction quotient versus KEQ. And then um, they'll also be looking at how to solve equilibrium problems using ice tables. And then finally, they'll be looking at the solubility product constant. So the second half, I would say, is more quantitative in nature. So in the last video clip, I was talking about um, one of the puzzles that I'm having the students complete. So let me show you what that looks like. One of the things that um, I try to do is um, differentiate for uh, process and for assessment pieces during the unit menu. So one of the ways that I do, especially the assessment piece, is I let the students solve different puzzles. So I use Tarsia, um, T-A-R-S-I-A. It's a free puzzle maker you can download, and I just make these essentially a jigsaw puzzle. And so I store them on these rings. So actually, like, I make them, I print them, um, and then I laminate them, and then I cut them out, and then I, I put, punch a hole in them. That way I can store them easier on these little rings from the dollar store. And then the other thing that I do is I give the students the answer key. So, so you can use this QR code um, to just kind of scan into any Chromebook or um, any like phone and it'll take you to the answer. So, uh, and it's up to you if you want to include it right from the get-go or if you want to um, essentially like, you know, give it to them when they're ready to go. But um, I, I tend to just include it. That way they're kind of more self-paced and more self-directed. So the, um, this jigsaw puzzle, um, I believe, is 16 pieces, and it'll be in the shape of a triangle. But this one's extra um, challenging, I guess, because some of the answers are not um, used. So that makes it a little bit difficult for them because the ones that aren't used will actually be on the outside of the puzzle instead of the inside, so there's no direct match. Um, so that's pretty much how I um, assess the students using puzzles. Tarsia is a very common example of what I do, and then I like the fact that I can let them kind of check their answers at their leisure. So it's the end of the day on Wednesday. Um, I just finished with my CP classes. They have a quiz tomorrow on the Chatelier's principle. Um, and then my honor students, I decided to push off a day. Oh, there's the bell for dismissal. Um, so I decided to push off a day for honors because I didn't feel like they had enough time to kind of comprehend because we had an assembly in between. So it just just didn't have enough time to do everything, so I thought I would give it another day to kind of di just digest um, introduction to equilibrium and then Le Chatelier's principle, and then I have to move into um, the more quantitative stuff with equilibrium. So then I'll be moving into um, things like you know Q and K, and we'll be doing some ice tables to solve for equilibrium concentrations, and then we'll be looking at you know solubility product constant. So we still have a bit more to go. Um, kind of scared. I hope I finish everything that I need to finish. But on that note, I have a faculty meeting that I need to go to. Um, so hopefully I will spend a little bit more time recording tomorrow. It is 3.44 on Thursday. I am just about to start recording a video for one of the other sections of my unit menu. We're going to be starting um, looking at solubility product constants, and then we're also going to be looking at ice tables. So one of the things that I have to do is record a video on ice tables. Um, I don't know if you could tell or hear it in my voice, but I am sick, um, so I'm really not feeling that great, um, but I have to keep pushing through. And honest to goodness, I have no time off. Uh, I can't take a day. I really need to get through this. We're getting so close to final exams. Um, but it, it's really hard when you feel this crappy and you still have all this responsibility to do. And, you know, it's just, it just doesn't seem to be kind of um, lessening. Um, but I know eventually I'll have a lot of work and then it'll kind of drop off like nothing ever happened. Um, but 
<clears throat> with that said, I, one of the things I want, thought I would show you is one of the ways that I record my videos is actually kind of hokey. Um, but one of the things that I do when I'm recording a video is I take my computer and I have to put it and prop it on something because if I don't, then um, I have to like look down. So I don't know if you have any solutions for that, but in order for the students to kind of see my face and for me to like look okay on the video, I have to like kind of set up this hokey little thing where I balance it on a beaker. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm gonna record this video. Hopefully it won't take too long. It's about 13 slides. So we'll see, hopefully I'm aiming for 10 minutes, like under 10 minutes. Um, but other than that, today was a pretty good day, very busy day. Um, my honor students have a quiz tomorrow on Le Chatelier's principle. I think, I think I'm really overwhelmed with grading. I just I gave a, um, like a quiz in um, my CP chemistry class, so I'm feeling a little overwhelmed because I'm supposed to also quiz um, tomorrow in honors. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to give the students um, maybe like a Google Form quiz. That way they can take it through Google Form. It's pretty easy. It's just Le Chatelier. So I could probably just have it be like a self-grading quiz. That way it'll make my life easier this weekend. So anyway, I'm going to do this and I will catch in with you tomorrow. Friday. It is about 3.13 on Friday. Um, very busy day today, but still a good day. Um, my honor students took a quiz on Le Chatelier's principle and equilibrium, and then um, I surprised them today, and I said uh, the last question on their quiz, which I, of course I did not grade, but um, it said, I scream, you scream, we all scream for, and then they had to fill in the blank, and they all put ice cream, so I surprised them, and I said, you know, to um, reward you for your really hard work this year, your positive attitudes, because I know it definitely is not easy. Um, I thought since we talked about colligative properties this year, one of the things that you guys would like to do would be to make ice cream. So we are going to be making ice cream next week as part of our lab, and I'm very excited. So they were very happy. And then um, my CP students, they did a calorimetry lab. Um, that was kind of a miscellaneous topic that we just didn't get a chance to cover um, over the course of the school year. So they were working on their calorimetry lab, just you know doing calculations with Q equals MC delta T and whatnot, and it went pretty well. I then um, also started um, the second half of the unit menu with the honor students, and so I thought I would just do a quick recording of um, some of the stuff that I um, added to this unit menu. So I do kind of like a mind map um, in order to think about the way I want to progress through a unit, especially whenever I'm constructing a unit menu. So this is actually what the equilibrium unit menu started out like. So um, I first started with an intro to equilibrium, and typically what I try to do is think about what resources must be out there. Now, because I'm in a one-to-one -one district, it makes things really easy for me to be able to find online resources. Um, but there were two things that the students were able to participate in. So that was the SIM or the launch lab activity. So either one um, to teach about Le Chatelier. There were a whole bunch of different um, options. And then I'm just kind of, again, just brainstorming ideas for how I want to teach the progression. I do sometimes will write down like what things I know are available. Um, you know, so I, that's for the process and that's for the product. So that's kind of what the equilibrium unit menu started out like. So. Then, as we go to the actual unit menu, so this is the unit menu that I showed you the other day that I was working on. So um, this was, again, a lot of choices that the kids had. So this was the first one, and then I put when the quiz on the content was. Um, so um, I try to split it up into as many major categories as I can. So they were looking at um, the introductory part and then Le Chatelier. They took a quiz on that today, and then this was an example of a sim. This was the um, lab that we did. This was a Chem Matters article. So in order to incorporate some sort of literacy in the science classroom, I assigned Chem Matters articles, and then I also assigned some questions. This is also great for phenomena-based learning as well, so you can come back to this throughout the unit. This was an option to learn about Le Chatelier's principle. This is the compound interest infographic that um, the students uh, used and some of them chose to do this. So I made multiple copies of this because I know that some students like to do multiple options, which is totally fine. They could do multiple options if they want. And then this was um, 
the one like the answer key to the Tarsia puzzle. So this was what they were able to use to kind of check their answers with the QR code. That brings me to my um, my second half of the unit menu. So. Um, as I mentioned in the last video, one of the drawbacks to using a menu unit menu is that you have to really have everything in place um, and get it, you know, kind of organized for the students so you kind of know what you're doing. And so it took a lot of time for me to get these resources together. So that's why um, I was I had to kind of do it in two parts. So um, so this has part three, part four, and part five. Um, the FET sim. Um, it's a really good sim, but it didn't have a whole lot of options for questions that went along with it, so I actually had to make that. A lot of this stuff I, I made, so for example, like I make all the videos. The textbook is just what it sounds like. The Chemtour, um, I forget who makes it. It's a it's from a publishing company. I forget which one, but um, this is available right online. I think it's from Norton, actually, so it's a Norton Chemtour. Um, there's a process-oriented guide to inquiry learning um, activity that the students participate in and then the kids told me that they really like to do the worksheets and check their answers so um, that's why typically a lot of these the worksheet is required um, for the solubility product constant stuff I made it uh, them have a choice of a worksheet or whiteboarding because I thought that that would be helpful for the kids to kind of um, take a minute and visualize what was going on if they were whiteboarding so then, um, so then I have answer keys to everything. I try to post answer keys to everything so the kids have access to it. So this is like my ice table worksheet. Um, this is the equilibrium simulation that I made, some accompanying questions that go with it. So that's that was that. Um, and that's pretty much it. So that's kind of what the unit menu looks like in a nutshell. And then again, they'll have a quiz on this stuff um, that'll be scheduled for next week. So it's been a really busy day. Um, I am going to head home and get some rest. I have a presentation that I need to do on Tuesday of next week, so I need to spend the bulk of my Saturday working on that. Oh, it never ends. Again, I think I was talking this morning, talking about how you know it's you're running to get stuff done, and then all of a sudden the work just drops off so easily and so quickly. Um, I'm not quite at that point yet, but I'm getting close. So thank you so much for watching. Again, this video I hope taught you a little bit about how I construct my unit menus and would maybe possibly give you an option of constructing your own someday in your own classes. My students in the honors classes really seem to like it and I think that your students will also really like that, the fact that they have choices.